Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino. When we think about Rhino and industrial design, we usually think about creating and developing exterior shape and form, managing complex surface transitions, and very much concerning ourselves with the visual appearance of a product. However, very often as designers, we need to concern ourselves with interior features that are very often unseen. To describe, even if only in outline detail, how parts can be manufactured and assembled. Adding this type of detailing isn't just the preserve of engineers using engineering solid modelers, it can be done in Rhino too. In the second of two short videos, I'm going to look at how we can use Rhino to add more internal detailing, ribs and bosses, to an injection moulded assembly, working onwards from an existing shelled component. For this second video session, I'll look at a different design. This time I have a panel mounted display that once again is composed of two main mouldings with a clamshell lip feature. There's a clear polycarbonate screen bonded to the front moulding and that sits in this recess here. On the rear of the housing we have some threaded inserts and a Gore-Tex vent. Looking at the inside of the moulding, the features I'm going to add are these small bosses here that house threaded inserts to secure an LCD display module and these larger bosses and their counterpart on the rear moulding. First though, I'm going to look at this wall feature here that is designed to encapsulate an O-ring seal. We can see the seal and its housing in more detail in these sectional views. The seal sits in a recess in the wall created in the rear moulding and the thinner wall created in the front wall compresses the seal. Let's look at a couple of ways of creating the wall in the front moulding. First, I could use the two closed curves that define the outside and inside of the top of the wall. I can run solid, extrude planar curve, tapered, and pick both of the curves here and enter. Then I can input the draft angle of minus 2 degrees. If I now pull down on the curves to preview the extrusion, I can check that the draft angle is being created in the correct direction, so tapering outwards not inwards. Then I can use the two boundary option here to run the extrusion all the way onto the inside face of the moulding. Now all I need to do is to pick these two objects and go to the solid menu and run union to create one manifold solid from these two parts. Next I'll look at a way of working with the center line of this wall, but just to say at this point that the rib command would produce a correct tapered wall also, but only when working with an open curve. When we use the rib command with a closed curve, we get a tapered wall with a constant thickness, which for injection moulding would create an undercut. We can, however, work with a single closed curve using a method similar to how I created the clamshell lip feature in the first video. I've created another couple of layers here and if I just turn off front shell you'll see that we've got the center line of the seal fixture and then if we look at this from the front view you'll see that I've drawn 2D closed curves to describe the two parts that are going to compress the seal. I've reduced the taper here in an effort to keep the wall thickness as thin as possible to avoid sink marks and I've also extended these sections so that they'll intersect with the thickness of each of the shells so I can easily boolean the parts together afterwards. So looking first at the front shell I'll run surface sweep one rail, pick the rail then the cross section and hit enter and use the same sweep settings as in the previous video. I can then union the parts together and this time I'll add a small fillet radius at the bottom of the wall using a value of a quarter of a millimetre just to soften off this edge. 
I can then repeat the process with the rear moulding, so I'll rotate the view here and run surface sweep one rail again. In both cases the cross section isn't touching the rail and this produces a more complex fitted sweep. But as long as I have the perpendicular orientation correct then in terms of the accuracy this should all be good. To finish here I can once again union these parts together and apply a small fillet on the edge here. So this is a pretty quick way of creating this feature. And finally, let's just have a look at this in a more simplified display mode. Next up, let's have a look at these small blind bosses here. These contain a small threaded insert and as such they have a particular type of internal detail. The boss itself has an external taper of 1 degrees and creating the body of the boss is pretty straightforward. Here I've marked the top centre of the four bosses and if I zoom into this area I can draw a circle that describes the top surface of the boss which has a radius of 2.21 millimetres. I can go to the Solid Tools tab and from the Extrude toolbar I can select Boss and in the command line set the mode to tapered and a draft angle of 1 degree. Then I'll pick the curve which needs to be closed and planar followed by the boundary and the boss will be created. So this is like an extrude to boundary command with an integrated boolean function and this is fine for creating the outside of the boss but not for the internal detail which I'd need to create separately. One way that I can create this internal detail is to use revolved hole from the solid tools toolbar. And here I'd need to have the 2D profile of the curve drawn on or parallel to the active construction plane. I'll need half of the whole section including the detail that closes off both the top and bottom of the hole. I'll run the revolved hole command and pick the profile curve followed by the base point before picking the planar surface into which to create the hole. Here I'll use the flip option to orient the hole correctly and then I can either snap to the point or use the center snap to create the hole. So that's one way of creating this simple blind boss detail. If there are multiple bosses to add however I could consider another approach. I could draw the section of the boss as a 2D drawing. This is the bottom of the hole here which is at a controlled depth and the boss is drawn slightly over long here so that it intersects with the thickness of the moulding. The top centre of the hole is this point. So I can just copy this and snap it into position before running the revolve command from the surface menu to create a closed surface that I can then boolean union into the shell. Before I do this however I can copy the boss into the other required positions. So that's a couple of ways of adding that blind boss and the next thing I need to do is to add these more complex bosses here. In terms of the inside of the boss again there's a threaded metal insert and so this interior detail can be added afterwards with the revolved hole command as previous. Considering the external shape here, one thing that we can't do is to take this top profile and extrude it with a tapered extrude command because of course the angle is bigger on the edge of these supports or buttresses here than it is on the sides. There's a 1 degree general taper on the boss and the sides of these supports but a much bigger angle on the ends of the supports. One possible workflow here would be to create a planar curve that describes much longer supports that can be extruded at 1 degree and then I can trim the outside of the supports with a cutter that describes the required angle and I can do this with a fairly simple boolean operation. However, given that, there's still a couple of things that I need to be careful about when creating this. If I build the curve with this interior radius here 
and let's say this radius is 0.3 millimeters and then I go to solid extrude planar curve tapered set the draft to minus one and use the two boundary option then one of the issues here is that the 0.3 millimeter fillet is going to reduce in size as we get towards the base of the boss and so of course if I want to run a 0.3 millimeter fillet around the bottom edge this will give us an immediate problem. If I instead describe the curve with sharp corners here and I again run solid extrude planar curve tapered with the two boundary option one of the things that could happen is that small extra faces are created here and these may obstruct the ability to apply a fillet in this corner and this is often a particular problem with the tapered extrude command. To get around this what I could do is to create these curves as separate closed curves and then take these five curves and run solid extrude planar curve tapered with the two boundary option and then union the five elements together. Now I have the simple geometry that I can apply a fillet to later but the next step would be to trim the outside of the supports. I've created this truncated pyramid that describes the angle I need to create on the outside of the boss supports and this is oversized to make sure that when for example I use boolean two objects here I'll get a clear intersection. So this is the result that I want and I'll enter to accept it. Then I can create the internal detail as previous using the revolve hole command to get this result. On the assumption that my object is symmetrical about x and y I can take the boss and mirror about the y axis and then I can take both of these bosses and mirror about the x axis to create the four boss positions. It's then a case of using boolean union to join the bosses to the shell. I'll just union one of these to start off with before creating a 0.3 millimeter fillet. And here I'll need to be careful about making sure I pick the correct edges. I'll run solid, fillet edge, fillet edge, set the radius to 0.3, set preview to yes and then start picking the edges. So I want to go all the way around the bottom and then up these edges and when I have all the edges selected I'll run the preview to make sure I've selected the correct edges. The top of course needs to remain sharp because that's the tool shut off. When I'm happy with the result I'll enter to accept it. So now I have the more detailed boss with a constant radius fillet around the areas that require it and the simple geometry that allowed me to apply that fillet. Looking at a section through the completed assembly we can see the corresponding recessed boss feature in the rear moulding and this is the last detail I'm going to add in this session. Although there is a process where I could work entirely in the metaphor of solids to do this it's probably easier to create a revolve boss and work using surface tools as it's easier to make sure that the A and B side of the shell have the correct complementary detailing. So in terms of starting off I'd mark the top center of the boss and draw in a polyline to represent a sharp edged version of the boss with the upright lines being overlong so that the revolve will intersect with the A and B surface. Next I'll run revolve from the surface menu, click on the point to mark the start of the revolve axis and enter to use C plane Z for the direction of the axis. Then I'll type F to describe a full circle for the revolve. With the revolve having been created the easiest way of adding this to the shell is to detach the main inner and outer surfaces from the shell and hide the remaining parts. Next I'll detach the outer part of the boss before mirroring both parts first about the C plane X axis and then about the Y axis 
to position all four bosses. Next, I'll create an intersection curve between the B surface and the larger boss surface and trim both the boss and the surface with that curve. And then do likewise with the A surface and the remaining boss poly surface, working around gradually until all four bosses and interior holes are trimmed. Then I can show in the rest of the shell and join everything together making sure I have a closed poly surface. The final task is then to create the fillets and for brevity I'll just do one boss here, working first on the B surface and add a 1mm fillet using solid fillet edge fillet edge. Then working with the boss thickness which is 1.2mm I'll add a 2.2mm fillet to the A surface and if the inside here is left sharp I'll need a 1.2 fillet on the reverse of this feature to maintain a constant wall thickness. So that's one way of creating a recessed boss that interacts with both the A and B surfaces at the same time. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful please hit the like button and remember to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.